This is how to use the Everly Well Food Sensitivity Test. As I've been looking much more closely at my diet and trying to do the best I can for health-wise, for weight loss-wise, maintaining lean muscle, and also now trying to avoid inflammation, especially for the heart health. So the point of a food sensitivity test is it tested against 96 common foods that could be maybe not a full allergy, but a sensitivity to it. So that means it may cause inflammation. I have another video on the actual diet I've been doing already that's a wolf diet with a keto diet, with a third day cheat day and intermittent fasting, just trying to do everything I can to try to lean out as much as possible. You can see that video in the description below if you wanna learn more about what I'm actually doing now, but I just wanna make sure that there's nothing I'm still eating that could be an inflammation issue. First thing to do is open the kit, and the first thing it says is to register your kit using the QR code. And the QR code comes up, show options, open in browser, says log into my Everly. I think this is a new one, so I'm gonna sign up. Just ask for your name, your email address, enter a password in case someone else wants to break in and see what my food sensitivities are. Create my account. And then it gives the kit ID number, make sure it matches there. I am the test taker. Next, personal information. Get real-time text updates on the status of your test. Subscribe to our newsletter, hell no. All right, sample collection info. It is 2.16.23 at six o'clock p.m. Next, food sensitivity test. There, there. I agree, get real-time, fine, register kit. And start. What are your current health goals? Um, get a status check on my health, sure. I don't think this stuff really matters a whole lot. Continue. Height, no idea what that matters. 6'1", continue. Weight, 12 let's say right now. All right, finally, after all that, collect sampler now. The last step is to collect your sample, tips before you collect. All right, warm your hands with hot water for at least one minute, then shake them at your sides for 15 to 20 seconds. Get the water hot first, okay. Now shake them at the sides for 15 to 20 seconds. Did that. The best site for a finger puncture is just off the center of the finger pad. The tip of the finger should be avoided, okay? There's a little Picture there. Place your finger on a, on a countertop. Make sure you get the proper. Okay, when you're ready to collect your sample, watch this instructional video. The collection card should have five, 10, or 12 spots. So here is your collection card. And this particular one has five. Prep your space, doing that. Open the gauze pad. Here's the gauze pad. And the gauze pad here and the bandage. All right, there's the bandage. Warm your hands, which I just did. Choose the finger. It likes, it keeps pointing at the fourth finger here. So I'll do that and it says not on the tip, but on the side of it. Use the alcohol swab to wipe off the finger you're going to use. Use the lancet. Okay, so twist the top off the lancet to open it. Then press the lancet down your finger to puncture the skin. Use the extra lancets if you need more blood, okay? So now I'm gonna poke this in here and I'm gonna press down until it pops. And now I'm gonna squeeze and drip the blood. And it says, point them down. Well, this isn't super pretty, but I guess the main thing is to get them in the circles. Um, do not touch the card. Okay, my aim's getting better. I got right in the center of that one. I'm gonna go back and 
trying to make sure the holes are or this the I'm trying to make sure the circles are filled okay all five are full make sure each circle is fully filled and that your blood soaks through the back of the card which it did okay good deal now it says tuck cover here so i'm going to tuck the cover and then before i bleed all over then use the bandage to cover the wound double check that you've registered your kit which i have it says once the sample is dry so give it a couple minutes to dry put it inside the biohazard bag and place it into the box Keep the silica gel inside the bag with the sample. Make sure you mail back the card that came with the kit that you registered. Locate the return envelope, which is this. So this has a return address of Austin. I guess that's where Everly Well is located perhaps. And then it's going to Pittsburgh. So now that this is dry, placing it in the biohazard bag, sealing it, just a little Ziploc, dropping it in the return bag, sealing that. Then I am taking the return address label. I'm going to use it to kind of capture that as well. And now I can mail this back. I'll run this over to the mailbox right now and get it on the way. Within about a week or so, I received the food sensitivity test. They were very good about sending uh, text messages to kind of keep me updated. And then you get this display and it says there are 13 foods that you have mild reactivity to. And if you kind of look through there, it'll talk about sensitivity and reactivity. This will pick up if you have, say, an actual allergy. Uh, nothing I had was in that range. Everything I had was a mild reactivity. And so if you go through here, Kind of handy, it gives you the list of foods that I should probably be avoiding. Uh, first one, almond, that's a little bit frustrating just because I do eat a lot of almonds as they're something that is supposed to be good for the heart. So it's pretty helpful about saying, this is what you should avoid and here's other things that it could be finding like almond milk, almond butter. Uh, it says pumpkin seeds might be a good substitute, etc., And other like hidden sources where you might find these kind of things. Then next one was apple and then baker's yeast. So I'm good to avoid bread and wheat stuff like I do anyway. Uh, pizza dough, all those kind of things, not eating those anyway, so that's good. Bell pepper is something I enjoy once in a while in an omelet or when I was eating pizza, I might throw them on. So that's good to know. Brewer's yeast, uh, that means no more beer basically. And that's okay at this point. I'm not drinking right now anyway. And if I did, it'd probably be more of a bourbon. So I'd probably be safe there. It says beer and wine. Cashews, they're good. I don't eat a lot of them, but it's good to know that. Chicken. Uh, most chicken breasts kind of taste like a piece of leather anymore. I do miss the barbecue chicken. I do enjoy that. So I'll have to stop doing that once in a while, but that's fine. I prefer the red meat anyway. Egg yolk, that's a tough one. I eat three eggs a day. They're a great, healthy breakfast. So I'm gonna have to kind of look at it and maybe I'll need to not eat the yolks in one or two of the eggs. So maybe I just make three egg whites with one yolk or something. I'll have to run back through the macros and kind of do the math. Eggplant, I don't ever wanna taste eggplant again, so I'm good at that. Garlic is kind of a bummer. I really like garlic too on some stuff, especially Italian dishes. Green pea, that's fine. Uh, peanut, I don't eat a lot of peanuts, but I do eat peanut butter once in a while in my protein shake. Currently, I only have it once every third day. It's one little spoon, so I'm not gonna beat myself up too bad for that. And then the last one is rice. So I guess no more Reuben sandwiches, not really eating bread right now anyway. But this is a pretty interesting report. It's helpful, it was quick, they keep in good uh, communication, and they give you some background and some alternates and where to look out for it. So that's kind of handy. And then they also show, you know, I've got like 83 of these things that are uh, normal, which is good to see things like avocado and asparagus, 
uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, cinnamon, codfish, coffee, cottage cheese. Yeah, I don't really want to eat that. <laughs> That's about one of the grossest foods I can imagine. So I was a little bit concerned that I was going to see dairy, like cheese, milk, and things on the no-no list. And that's only because I had dairy allergies from birth to about, I don't know, 14, 15 range, something like that. And it hasn't really bothered me since. I'd also had allergic reactions to tomatoes at times. So pretty happy to see that I don't exhibit any kind of sensitivities, let alone allergies to those. Uh, I don't really drink milk anyway, but I do eat cheese almost every day on my omelet. So that's good to know I can still continue having that. So overall, I've been very pleased with this product, very handy in terms of the actual ordering, the uh, doing the test, getting the results quickly, and a helpful report format. And it's useful information that I can take and now make even more improvements in my healthy lifestyle. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.